For section 6.7, we're looking at similarity transformations. Now, similarity transformations are different than the congruence transformations we've looked at previously. Congruence transformations looked at shifting an object on the graph, rotating, or reflecting. All of these ended with the shape being the exact same size, therefore it was congruent. Um, so this one is we're actually looking at it being similar. So it's a transformation that stretches or shrinks a figure to create a similar figure. Now we remember similarity, which is what this chapter looked at, we have the same angles but different sides. So it's the same shape, different size. So that's something to keep in mind. They're not going to be the exact same size, but they'll still be the same general shape. So a triangle that may look in a certain manner will actually get larger or smaller, but it'll still appear to have the same general shape to it. So uh, we have a center of dilation, and that's the point that the figure is enlarged or reduced from. Um, we'll have a couple examples where it's the origin, and we'll have a couple examples where it's a certain point that they give us. And it'll, we'll approach it a couple different ways. When it's the origin, it's typically the more general approach, but we can still work through if it was elsewhere. And uh, another thing we have is the scale factor of the dilation, and that's again a ratio, and there it's going to be the image over the original. And we're going to see why, particularly when the notation comes to play, why it's important that it needs to be the image's value over the original. So looking at the coordinate notation for dilation. A dilation with a center of dilation at the origin, so it has to be at 0, 0, and it would tell you in the directions, will follow this notation. The point xy will go to kx, ky, where k is the scale factor. Now we said the scale factor is the ratio of the image over the original. And when we get that k value, if the k value happens to be between 0 and 1, it's going to be a reduction and it's going to get smaller. So think of that scale factor as some value between 0 and 1. It's going to take that triangle and as we do the, the reduction, it's going to be the same triangle, only smaller. And enlargement is when your k value, your scale factor, is greater than 1. So any value greater than 1, we're going to have an original shape get larger and create a similar image. So reduction between 0 and 1 gets smaller, enlargement will make it bigger. And that's going to be when its k is greater than 1. So the rest of the way, we're just going to look at different examples of this. So I'm based off the, the center at the origin, and I have a scale factor of 2. So let's go through and just look at the notation of first. So I'm going from x, y, and by what I said, I'll go from to 2x, 2y, because that's going to that kx, ky. So the point 2, 1 goes to 4, 2. b, which is 4, 1, goes to 8, 2. C, which is 4, negative 1, goes to 8, negative 2. And D, which is 1, negative 1, goes to 2, negative 2. So then we go through and we graph it, and we get our new points. So I have 4, 2, 8, 2, 8, negative 2, and 2, negative 2, which gives me my new shape. Let's put some lines in. So we notice, and I drew some lines in, so it's not exact here, but we can see we had a smaller shape and it became larger. And it's the same general shape. The angles are the same, but it's a different size. Now, maybe you notice that these points actually line up. So if I went from the origin through A to its image, that lined up. If I go through D to its new point, its image, it lines up, as well as C and even B. So this actually means we can start to line them up to see how they change. So let's actually get rid of a couple of these. We're just going to look at one of them and look at as we go from A to its image. To get to A to its image, let's look at A. For A, I went over 2, up 1. To get to its image, I went over 4, up 2. Well, let's think about that for a minute. If I go over 2, up 1, and then I go over 4, up 
two, I actually doubled the distance I went for both of them. So using that scale factor, which happened to be two, by doubling the amount I moved in the x direction and the amount I moved in the y direction takes me to the new point. And I could do that really on all of them. And that's a way I could go through, instead of writing all of these points here, be able to find the new points for the image. Let's look at another one. So here I have my triangle, A, B, C. Now my scale factor is one half. So if I line it up, we'll do it a couple different ways. If I line this up with A, I'm going to go half the distance. Well, let's see, I went down four over four. So I could go down two over two. New point. To get to B, I went over eight up two. Well, I could go over four up one. And in C, I went down four over eight. So I'm going to go down two over four. And I get my new points. Let's draw in my image. And then we'll label them here. We'll go A prime, C prime, and B prime. Now we take a step back. We look at the two pictures. They are um, very look very close. They look to be the same. So we can also go here if we started with our points 4, negative 4, 8, 2, and 8, negative 4. We can apply our scale factor, which is just one half, so I get 2, negative 2, 4, 1, and 4, negative 2. Well, let's check. Are they the same? Well, 2, negative 2 is A prime, 4, 1 is B prime, and 4, negative 2 is C prime. So it does, in fact, work out. So that's another way you could do it as well. Now we need to verify that they're similar. So I'm looking at these two triangles. I could look at all of their sides. Um, but that would require me to use distance for me to figure out how far I am from AB, how far it is from A to B and A prime to B prime. Let's take the approach of side, angle, side. So let's see. First one I can see is I notice that angle C is congruent to angle C prime because they are right angles. Because AC and CB are perpendicular because I have horizontal vertical lines. AC, CB are perpendicular because I have horizontal and vertical lines. If I look at the length from AC, let's go A prime to C prime over AC. A prime to C prime is 2. AC is 4. Then C prime to B prime over C to B, I get 3 over 6. Now, both of those values turn out to be equal to 1 half, which means they have the same scale factor, which means those sides, our corresponding sides, are proportional. But wait a minute, where did we see that 1 half before? Oh, it was the scale factor up we had. So it does fit. We can see that the two triangles are similar by side, angle, side. So now we're going to take a little bit different approach. Now I'm looking at this point P, negative 6, negative 6, and I'm going to apply a scale factor of 3 to make this triangle, ABC, larger. Now I can't really use that notation of just multiplying them by 3. It's not really going to work here. But I'm going to use those ideas for the lines I just did to help me kind of trace it out. So I'm going to start from P, and I'm going to draw a line through B. don't really know how far to go, so I'm just going to mark it there. So if I look at how I got from A, or P, to B, I went down 1 over 5. So I'm going to do that again. Down 1 over 5. So that would actually be two lengths from P. I want to go 3. So I do it again. Down 1 over 5. So this is going to be my new point for B prime, because this, is, this was one length from P to B two lengths from P to B, three lengths. So this is three times the amount from P to B, which fits my scale factor. So let's back up and clear some of it out. So I have my new point, B prime. And let's get rid of this. I'll do the same process again, this time for C. So let's draw a line out.
So to go from P to C, down 4 over 2, so I'm going to do that once, twice, three times, which gets me to my new point for C, call that C prime right there, and again, that's three lengths of P to C. Cut out these. Last one we have is A. So if I go from P to A, I went down one over two, down one over two, down one over two, I get my new point here, and that's going to be A prime. So let's clear it out. We can draw in our sides. I have A prime to C prime, C prime to B prime, and A prime to B prime. I can write my new points A prime is going to be 0, 3. B prime looks like 9, 3. And C prime is 0, negative 6. Okay, if I want to change the scale factor to 4, I'll, besides the fact that I need a bigger graph, I would do the same process. By drawing those lines through, I can go through and start to double and triple, and I can change really any scale factor I would want. Now, let's say we want to make it smaller. Let's say we have a, a new, our point P up here. It looks like 8, 8. And I have a scale factor of 1 half. So if I looked at the distance, I went from P to A. Now I want to go half of it. So let's think. If I went from 8 to negative 8, and I wanted half of that, it would be at 0. So I could go to somewhere on the 0 for x. If I went from negative 2 to 8, and I wanted the middle of that, it would be 3. So if we look at those values, they actually meet right here. And we can see the distance from P to our new point, which we'll call A prime, is half the distance from P to A, which is fits. Scale factor is 1 half. We'll do the same thing again with our other side. Let's go, uh, we'll go to C this time. So let's see. From C, I went from 0 to 8. So x value of C is 0, x value of P is 8, so half of that is 4. So I'm going to go somewhere where it's 4. And then I went from negative 6 to 8. The middle of that will be 1. So it's going to be right here, and that's going to be C prime. If you're not seeing this, you could always do be using midpoint formula in this case because we are looking for the middle. But since we're on the graph, we can kind of work our way through it. Now we go, last one is B. My x value is negative 8 and 8. The middle of that will be at 0. And then negative 6 and 8 is 1. And we can kind of see it fits that it's going to go right there is our B prime. Let's draw on our sides. I have A, B prime. C prime. Now, if we think of the relationship between those two triangles, the triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is one half the size of A, B, C. And if we went through, we can match up the sides. They should be half the length, which we can kind of see real quick. If you have two and four, there's one half. There's our relationship. And we can always check that way. And by drawing those lines out, we can also confirm it. So let's write our points. A prime is 0, 3. B prime is 0, 1 and C prime is 4, 1.